Hello and greetings. So I was working on this multi-figured uh, narrative painting and came into a place where I think I can address a question that I've had before of how to get a glowing light effect. So I'm going to zoom in on this and show examples from a painting that I did a couple of years ago, a small one, 10 by 10 inches, that was called Story Time at the Ethereal Foot Spa. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, so before I do, I'll just mention that uh, this painting at this stage is still got a long way to go. Um, this is all still underpainting uh, some of the area. The bottom lo looks darker right now, is closer to finished. Uh, some of that is kind of closer to finished a little bit. Uh, anyways, uh, enough disclaimers and let's get into this. Okay, so while that guy is preparing the area that is going to get glowed into with uh, like Van Dyke Brown, uh, a few other various pigments, um, I'm going to take a trip back in memory lane to some previous light effects and other paintings. So this one you saw in the thumbnail, story time of the Ethereal Foot Spa. It was a very small painting, 10 by 10 inches, but I had some nice light effects that happened in there as you can see in the trees. There's a little bit of a glow on the edge of the trees, very simple concept of soft light. A uh, little bit of that happening in the warm direction on some of these rocks. The left side of the rocks are a little bit soft looking. And then this is the main one uh, where I'm doing a similar thing in my large painting right now. Uh, between those two boards, of course, you can see that kind of a nice glow effect. This one actually turned out better, but I didn't have a recording of it. And by better, I just mean that the local color of these boards surrounding the glow is actually lighter than it is in the painting I'm working on now where the boards are much darker so the transition area is smaller. Going back to 2020 with my large Guest of Honor painting, this one had a, a not as quite a similar type of uh, glowing effects necessarily, but a lot of soft light. Of course, Thomas Kincaid, this was reproduced roughly at about a postcard size. And uh, the little piano here, that's uh, almost a bit more of a photographic type of blur, just like an out of focus blur, which took forever to, to render with a brush. And uh, the AI chemist that I did uh, in 2023, very happy with the way this painting turned out, uh, despite it not being as large as it could have been. I still had a lot of really good glowing effects here with the warm light, of course. Same thing, you got white to yellow to orange to red to darker. And uh, same thing with the cool areas here. It's all just that soft light principle. And it uh, wouldn't have been nice if I had had video of this making these glow effects happen, but of course I didn't. I was just caught up in actually finishing the painting. So what's happening here is that once I start to apply paint, my apologies for not having a palette cam as well, but I'm just trying to find the right value mix. So this first little bit of a, kind of a pale turquoise green that I applied is somewhere in between the lightest part in the center of the boards and the darker uh, out of light part of the darker parts of the boards, obviously. Um, so what I'm really trying to do is represent um, a large part of the grayscale going from probably like one or two on the grayscale all the way close to 10. And I'm trying to fit that within like less than a centimeter, really like seven or eight millimeters. And so the real key to this technique is just slowing down, being very patient in calculating those exact values going from the light side to the dark side. Um, and I, I think that's kind of it, to be honest. Uh, this type of painting can be really time consuming and extremely finicky, so fair warning. So with this little nice close up here, so happy to have this macro lens to be able to get this close. Um, I'm trying to apply the brightest value and I have the darkest values already applied so now I can calculate where to go in between those. Uh, because if you don't have those, you really cannot see relative value. Um, we, we need that. I mean, some people may be different than others. I always find that I really need to know um, exactly what the extremes are before I can calculate what's going to fit in between those. And this right side, by the way, is kind of even trickier because the room for error is even smaller in terms of making it feel like it's actually glowing and blurry. So wrong technique, what does that mean? Well, um, there's a lot of different schools of thought in painting. 
and especially within the last couple hundred years or so, it's really been more favored to make a painting look like a painting and have like big brush marks. So this whole like gripping a small brush really close and staying close to the painting like that is always, is kind of frowned upon by a lot of people, I think. And, uh, but it's kind of just a different end goal. What I'm kind of doing is really painting a large miniature at this scale. I mean, this painting is 44 inches by 64 inches. So like a large medium size kind of a painting and to do this much rendering at this, uh, you know, so you can walk right up to the painting and see, kind of see more, um, just takes, a, takes forever. And so there I made that value way too light accidentally on that little spot, but there's no such thing as a mistake. There's really just another learning and teaching opportunity. So you're always able to blur things out. What I was really trying to do as it transitions in the darker values and the edge of this board is see if I can fit in some pure pigments as well. So I even have something that I usually don't really use that much, which is phthalo green, um, mixing with a little bit of uh, cobalt turquoise to, to see what I can get there. Um, what I'm scratching around here with now is just kind of showing that part that is really difficult because uh, in the soft light principle you don't want any areas that are extreme contrast to be directly touching each other. There's always going to be at least a couple values in between them and the area where the boards go down and then they meet the metal band that's going across. It's really tricky to, to get that kind of area so I have to like really slow down quite a bit in order to, to try to get that. In this part here I'm just kind of filling in where there would be light uh, shining onto this kind of dirty snow in the, the shadow of the snow here. Um, it has to be consistent, of course, right? So if light hits one thing, it will hit another thing. So I had to put some of the light on the top of that metal band, and then I also have to put some of the light onto the snow as well. Then it will kind of all make, so, make a bit more sense. All right, so this is as far as I'll go with this for now while the paint is wet. The area above still has to be painted anyways, the area that's kind of overexposed in the light source of the actual foot spa. So once I do paint that, I'll have another opportunity to come over these edges and potentially add a little bit more of a glow effect going forward. So there we have it for now. Um, Hopefully you can see that from that distance. Uh, if you can't, that pulls you closer. That's what I like to do with my work sometimes. Um, what else can I say? Yeah, this is unfinished. Uh, tune into my website and Instagram by uh, summer of 2024 to see the finished version. And uh, it's a lot of motivation for me to get to work right now because I don't like to show unfinished work. There's way too much to explain. So uh, that's it. Uh.